Where are you? Oh, uh, it's you. Welcome everyone to another mod spotlight and today we're gonna have a look at a freaking cool mod let me tell ya and it is called the control pack hell yeah and this mod doesn't add any new blocks or anything like that but what it adds is tons and tons of features that will make your everyday minecraft life so much easier easier. So why don't we go ahead and have a look at the individual features of this mod. Before I run you through all these nifty little features I tell you how to open up the menu of this mod. You do that by hitting Alt and Z and you will get that screen and at the beginning when you log in you will get a message telling you just to do that. And in here you can find all the options. So basically what you need to know, you can find the key bindings, you can configure all the options and so on and so forth. I'm going to run you through the options a little bit later in the video. But what you need to know, each of these features can be toggled on and off individually. So you can choose whatever you want. It doesn't need to be in it. And this counts for all of these. I just want to make this clear. So let's get started. So the first feature I'm going to show you is already so great you're going to poop your pants. The auto tool selection. And you can switch it on and off by hitting Alt T like so. You can see auto tool disabled right now. Alt T again, auto tool enabled. Pretty cool. You can switch between the modes. There are four modes. Alt R will switch. So we have the weakest mode, which I'm in currently. So this will always choose the weakest tool that you have available in your hotbar to uh, mine or dig whatever block you're looking at. Then we have the strongest, like so. This will obviously choose the strongest tool. Then we have leftmost, which will cho choose the leftmost tool in your hotbar and rightmost. Pretty cool. So right now I'm in strongest mode, which uh, is my favorite. All right. So if we are, you know, I'm I'm just here with my bare hand hitting in the air, and if I'm hitting this iron block, it will actually go and switch to the pickaxe automatically. Same thing with the sand. We'll choose the shovel. Pretty cool. What will it do with the wool? Oh, switch to the shears. That is comfy. And I click the sand for a second so it switched to the shovel again. Then we switch to the pickaxe and some shears again and the axe. Pretty cool. All automatically. I only click the block. Now with a flower or anything else that you don't want to use a tool, it will actually switch very quickly between the first slot that is available that will not use up anything. So if I had a sword in this first slot it would actually go to the hoe because if you hit something with a hoe it doesn't use up durability. But uh, since I have iron here it will go quickly to the iron and then switch back. So look at the hotbar. Bam. There we go. Didn't use up anything. Pretty awesome. That was the auto tool selection. Now this feature wouldn't be complete without the auto sword selection, which is the counterpart to that. So just to prove my point, I'm gonna spawn in some sheep and with the egg still in my hand, I will click the sheep, left click that is, and it will switch to the sword. Pretty cool. Any tool, but it will switch to the sword. And obviously if you don't have a sword, but selected the tool it will switch to your bare hand so you don't waste your tools. Pretty cool. You can uh, toggle that by with Alt S like so. Next up we have the auto block selection another very awesome feature. You can toggle it off and on using the Alt B combination. Now what it basically does, right now I'm in the leftmost mode. You can switch the modes in the config menu. 
Leftmost means it will choose the leftmost block, the first one that is available. Right now that is sand, so I want to switch that with my stone blocks. Left clicking will, you know, dig up the sand, we already had that. But when I right click now, it will actually choose the leftmost block. Pretty darn awesome. You can, uh, as I said, go in the convex menu and you can choose rightmost right there and you can also choose a specific slot between 1 and 9 so if you have a you know a slot where you usually put your building blocks that will be the slot that you're gonna choose cool the hold to attack feature is disabled by default and you can simply enable it alt C you know go in the configuration options and here you have all the options by the way and after watching this video each of these should be self-explanatory so the hold to attack feature is here just toggle it on and what it basically does you know usually you have to click over and over to kill a bunch of enemies but hold to attack will simply you know keep attacking With the next few features, we'll have some key combinations that you can simply configure by Alt-C and in the extra key bindings you can find them all and just click the button and choose your own keys that you want to have. So I've written it down for myself, it's not always the standard configuration, so just have a look in there and you will realize which keys you will have to use. The place torch key for me is the V key, so whenever I use the V key and look at something it will place a torch and switch uh, to whatever slot I had chosen previously. Eating food has never been as easy as now, for me the shortcut is the home button. Whenever I keep pressing that it will eat the food and when I let it go it will switch back to the item I had chosen before. Running around in the Minecraft world has always been a little bit a pain in the butt. Now we have an auto running feature with this mod. What you can do is you can hit the R key which is the default one and it can be adjusted. This will make you run. I'm not doing anything right now and I'm auto running. Pretty cool. I was missing that in this game. I was playing World of Warcraft. Numlock. Oh my gosh I was missing it. Now we got it back. Now there's an addition to this feature. You can hit the F key while running and you will go into sprint mode. No more freaking double tapping, much more reliable. Also, these two can be combined. You can hit the R key to run, auto run, and F to sprint. I'm not doing anything at all. Awesome. Down at the bedrock layers, it's not very nice, I have to say. Now we have a feature to actually disable this nasty little void fog. Just Alt C, go in the configuration options, and right here you have to render void. Turn it off, and you will have a clear vision. Much better. The automatic window restoration addresses an issue that I had with Minecraft for a long time. Now this feature actually remembers the last option that you had concerning you know the size of your screen so if you had it full screen and restart Minecraft it will actually go back to full screen once you locked in from the launcher. Oh my gosh that was a bad time. Have you ever tried making a cinematic of yourself using the third perspective? Well I have and I figured it's impossible. What you need is camera and little Steve here independent. Now this is what we get with this mod. Just hit F5 again and you will be in a different mode and you can now see I can switch my character around just like so. I can nod, I can shake my head, pretty cool without shaking the camera around. Also you can uh, keep the middle mouse button pressed and then you'll be able to move around the camera. Alternatively you could use control and your arrow keys to move the camera around I believe but I'm not sure about that. Pretty darn awesome. This little feature here you might appreciate if you are building a lot with different block types. 
the swap feature you can uh, you know choose your own controls I've chosen control and X control will swap to the left and X to the right so you have to keep it pressed control it will switch to the uh, cobble releasing control will switch back hitting X will switch to the dirt releasing it will switch back a very important feature implemented here is the uh, toggle sneak function. For me it's the Y key, for you it might be something else, but you can see in the top left we have sneak mode enabled and nothing, you know, there, there will, won't be any failures with shift clicking, no hurting pinkies anymore and all that stuff. Just hit your shortcut that you've chosen and you, you're good to go and build some more stuff. Note that this will also work on ladders and furthermore if you went in your inventory right now I'm pressing shift manually myself but as soon as I hit E I will go down again. Pretty annoying but if we enable toggle mode with the Y key sneak mode and go into our inventory we'll still be hanging and chilling out on the ladder. Kind of similar is the jump toggle. For me it's the J key and uh, we will automatically jump in water. Same thing works with the inventory. You will not go down and die and suffocate in the water while doing stuff in your inventory. Of course this works also on land if you want to jump up your mining tunnels and you just get sick of pressing the spacebar. The toggle mining function will come in handy when ma making mine shafts and all that good stuff. So hitting the M key will actually go in that mode and it will just you know keep destroying whatever you look at automatically I'm not doing anything and right now of course I don't have any tools but this works together with the tools mode and it also works together with the running mode let's have a look at that this is my little uh, wall on which I want to demonstrate the strip mine feature that you could use and uh, you can watch a, a movie and just leave this running if you wanted to. So hit the R key to auto run and to where you want to dig your tunnel. Then you look slightly down and what are you going to do? You hit M to start mining and it will of course go with the auto tool selection and it will... I'm not doing anything right now. I'm, I'm holding up my hands. I'm not sure if you can see it but now how awesome is that? Run and mine active. Yay. The use item mode, which you can toggle with N, is, uh, well, it will actually keep using the item that you have currently selected. If that is a block or if that is an item that you can use, it doesn't really matter. But it will do it really quickly in some cases. So let's see how fast we can throw all these snowballs. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Take it. One of my favorite features is the run distance feature. Now, ever had a hard time counting out blocks, you know, while building a really big project or something? Now, this is a thing of the past. I counted that from this wool block, or actually when I stand here, I have to go 10 blocks to reach this. So when I stand right here, it should be 10 blocks. Now this is just an obstacle that I put in the way and we're gonna expand this a little bit, just like so. Now what this basically does, uh, for me it's the C key, but you might have a different one in the standard configuration, but you will get this pop-up. And I can for instance travel five blocks and it will actually travel there. So this was five blocks. Now the great thing about this is I wanted to go ten blocks right there, but something is in the way. So let's do that. I should be standing right next to it after 10 blocks. So C and 10. 
Now I'm running here and oh damn it something is in the way but I'm still running and I can I can do whatever I'm, I want. I'm not going anywhere but as soon as I reach the mark it will stop running right at this block. This is the line. This is great. We are not done yet guys. So we have a smart furnace drops feature. Let's see what it does. So let's say you had a stack of sand and almost a stack of coal but you only wanted to put 8 coal in there you would have to do a lot of right clicking you know to get all these 8 coal in there because that's the amount you need to cook up a stack of sand but what we can do is shift click the stack of sand it will go in there and now if we shift click the coal it will put the exact amount of coal in there that you need to cook up all these items genius Running away from mobs will now be much less stressful because there's a way to look behind you. For me it's the middle mouse button. Just press it and you will have a sneak peek behind you and you can see it's slightly tilted because you know when you look behind you you have to kind of tilt your head. So That is a pretty cool feature. Loving it. Snow and rain effects have been decreased to an amount where it's no more annoying. Thanks God. If you liked it as it was before, you can uh, disable it. As usual. So right now on YouTube it's probably very dark, you cannot really see shit. And if you're on a mobile phone it's even worse. What I can do with the click of a button, for me it's B for you it's whatever and you can adjust it and I'm in full brightness mode now it's moody now it's full brightness and I hope you can see a difference a very exciting feature is the sound effects volumes now you have the possibility to go in there in this little menu and you can change the sound settings for each of these features individually. So if I want to get rid of the pistons sounds, I just shut this off and all the other sounds will have the normal volume. Now, I mean, how much more awesome can it get? Alright, so we're almost through with all the features this mod provides. So there's two more things I want to show you. Uh, you might have seen the coordinates that are, that are on my screen. Now you can change these by going in the configure options. Right here you can choose the location of the coordinates. And they can be on uh, whatever side you want or you can have them off uh, completely. I'm gonna go with top left for now. Now we can create some waypoints. We also do that in the menu right here. And if we click on set, it will actually choose the coordinates that we are currently in. And I just can give this a name, like so. And you can see it has been added right here in the menu. Also, you can uh, choose this to be toggled on and off separately if you want. You can also choose set again to delete the coordinates. Now, if you want to tell other players your location, there's an easy way to do that instead of, you know, typing down the coordinates yourself. For me, it is the insert key. Again, you might have to adjust this. Now, uh, if I'm in the chat menu and hit the insert key, it will actually add the coordinates that I'm in and I can just shout this out. <laughs> All right, so this has been it for the control pack mod. Right now these are all the features that this mod provides. There might be some more added in the future, you never know. But what else you need to be convinced to download this awesome mod, especially because each of these features can be toggled off and on to whatever needs you have. So I encourage you, go ahead, have a look in the description, you'll find the link to the mod right there and you can have some fun with it. Thank you very much for watching, have a good time and I catch you next time. Bye-bye.